started it all. Steps by the challenge. He was on his left foot. It's a poor effort and Donegal were calmness uh, personified. They kept their heads, didn't lunge in and it forced Cork to the air. That's wonderful play from the Donegal defence. The force Cork laterally that time over and back the field eventually came to Canty. But just watch the pressure that's put on him as he takes that kick. I think it's, it's a Mark McHugh to get, uh, who gets down on his foot. But that's been typical of the Donegal defending all through. Kick out by Paul Durkin. Brilliantly caught by Neil Gallagher. It's absolutely wonderful to see high fielding in the middle of the field. Carl Lacey, poor pass inside, easily cut out by Toddy Kassan. Far as Michael Shields. And to Graham Canty, who's back there in a more familiar territory of centre half back. This is Pierce O'Neill. To Canty. Hefty challenge by McFadden. And he wasn't letting go. Either one of them, so it'll be interesting. McFadden is claiming that Canty held on to him. And I don't think so. Well, I'm not too sure, Martin. He's uh, still writing his name into the book. And when he does that, this could be a yellow card. And it's a bit of a silly yellow card. It is a yellow card, actually. Yeah, he's over exuberant in the tackle completely, but I, did, I, I didn't think Canty was holding on to him. I think it was just a badly executed tackle, and it deserved the yellow card. Graham Canty, far as Paul Kerrigan. The reinforcements are behind him in the shape and form of Aidan Walsh, but he goes forward. Now Aidan Walsh is calling for Kerrigan turns. It's dropping left and right. And that, for information, is Cork's eighth wide of the game and their second of the second half. Yeah, and OK, you can blame maybe, if you like to, the last time uh, Canty and that time Paul Kerrigan, but the, the, the intensity of the tackling by the Donegal defence is just something to behold. Paddy McGrath. Same club, of course, that produced Damien Diver and Brendan Boyle in the past. This time, Cork pressure wins the dividends, wins the possession back. Paddy Kelly, fires Aidan Walsh, slipping one through, fires Pierce O'Neill. Had the vision to give it back outside, fires Kieran Sheehan. And just uh, Sheehan, did he do enough? White flag is raised, and it's signalling a Donegal sideline ball. Paddy McBrearty. David Watch. That's a high challenge enough by Aidan uh, by Aiden Walsh. The two Walshes combining. Play continues on with Rory Kavna. Michael Murphy. Lovely skill. Beautiful footwork. But then he loses it out rather easily to uh, Nolo Leary. And Cork come away. David Walsh still down in the middle of the field. Flicking it forward is Dominic O'Connor. Colin O'Neill trying to lay it off. And back there is Mark McHugh. And Donegal continue. A counter attack. In the shape of form of Paddy McBrearty. Laying it off. Paddy McGrath. McBrearty. Michael Murphy. Stepping aside from the challenge. Mark McHugh gives it back to McFadden. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. It's his third point of the game. And McFadden, despite being very tightly marshalled and at times the quality of the ball not the best, he still is on the form of his life. What about that for a score? That's an exceptional score, Marty. I know coming into the game he has scored something like 323. But that time none of the players seemed to want to take responsibility. But eventually the fun McFadden just looked up off the outside of the foot and that's an inspiring score. And David Coldrick is coming to have a chat and is having a chat with Aidan Walsh because that was a late challenge on David Walsh. And again, I have to give credit to David Coldrick, the referee. He allowed the play to continue on and then when there was a break, he decided to go back and book and uh, give a yellow card, which is about to show, to Aidan Walsh. Yeah, I don't think Aidan Walsh can have any complaints about that. It was a late tackle on his namesake, David, and it merged a yellow card. This is the challenge again by Aidan Walsh on David Walsh, no relation, as they say. This is the first time, actually, that there have been two points between the teams. Nine points to seven. Paddy Cassat. David Walsh. Noel O'Leary wasn't expecting the move at all. 
and Donegal counter attack. Lack of concentration means that Frank McGlynn is going forward. Poor pass from Aidan Walsh. Ken McGlynn scored. He's done it at Ulster. He's done it in Cove Park. Not bad for a corner back. A point against Cavan. A point against Derry. A goal against Down in the Ulster final. And now one against Cork. It's ten points to seven. Wonderful score that time from McGlynn. And once more it was as a consequence of great tackling, intense tackling, relentless tackling from the Donegal players outfield. Turnover, great responsibility taken by McGlynn, fine score. Noel O'Leary, who wasn't expecting that pass from Aidan Walsh at all. Here on Sheehan, trying to get by that initial challenge. The support is not there. And Donegal, snap up the loose ball. With the pan who scored three points, Colin McFadden lays it off to Rory Kavna. Kavna, poor ball. Shields pulls in the first time. He had actually time to gather it. Paddy McBurty from the middle of the field hits it powerfully, but hits it left and right. Six wides for Johnny Gore. At that time, it must be said, that Lacey made a wonderful run up the middle. The ball was just slightly overcooked. That time, OK, eventually McBurty had a shot from distance, went wide. Paddy Kelly, Graham Canty. Ball was aimed at Colm O'Neill, but look who's back there. Leo McClune in a right corner back position. McHugh to Paddy McBrearty. The work rate by Dunny Ball is phenomenal. David Walsh stepping forward to the challenge. Cool under pressure, McBrearty lays it off to McHugh. Backfires Neil Gallagher. Overfires Neil McGill, the full back. Coming forward is Carl Lacey. He scored in the first. He's done it in the second. What a second half performance by the Ulster champions. Look at the scoreboard on the top of your screen. Johnny Goal, 11 points. Cork seven, level seven times in the first half, and Donegal have stretched, and Cork haven't scored since the 27 minute of the first half. Well, that's a thunderous second half start from Donegal. They're the one, the quality of the running off the ball, the movement from Donegal, but the tackling in particular around the middle area is forcing Cork sideways, backwards, anywhere but forwards, and they're fully merit their four point lead at the moment. The referee's whistle had blown. Michael Murphy didn't hear it. Graham Canty did, and there's an extra 13 metres for Paddy Kelly. Everything going wrong for Cork. They just seemed a little bit nervous handling in the second half, the early stages, just a little bit nervous. Here comes Aidan Walsh to settle them down with a score, and it's a really good one. Aidan Walsh with his first point in this All-Ireland semi-final, and it's back to just three points between the teams. And that's the recipe that Cork need to do. Get a little, get the ball, little passes like that, as from O'Leary to Aidan Walsh, and top it with it without taking the ball into traffic. Mark McHugh picks up the loose ball, quick kick out rather from Paul Durkin. Looking around, very much in control. Carl Lacey. Two wonderful points in this match. Eamon McGee. Gone forward is Paddy McGrath. Daniel Goulding has gone back to challenge. David Walsh, Michael Murphy, lays it off as Rory Kavna. Gets by three court defenders. He's on the 20. His options available left and right. Back to Kavna. Nice and jigging a brilliant block down. Comes back outside to Anthony Thompson, and that's over the bar. It's the real first goal-scoring opportunity for Donegal, and Cork were all over the shop here, and just at the last second managed to get a touch-out, and the ball sent over the bar by Anthony Thompson. That's a wonderful piece of coordinated play at that time by Cavan. Just watch him knifing through the defence, plays it off to Thompson, the little one too. Good save by the Cork goalkeeper. Thompson, presence of mind, there in abundance, good score. Back to four points again. Paddy Kelly, Kieran Sheehan, having a goal from way out, not a great ball for Colm O'Neill, but he gathers it, he's inside, he's there, he's almost there, comes back up the crossbar, hot break for the Cork team, centre 
centimetres away from cracking the back of the net. And Tony Gall, their speciality is the counter-attack. Look at this from Leo McLean. In Paris, McFadden. Park defender is down. McFadden has the time, but he sends it left and right. He should have scored from that. But wow, what a chance for Colm O'Neill. He did all the hard work. Look at that. Won the dirty ball, got inside, had a crack off the crossbar. <laughs> yeah, and then you look at the actual quality of the counter-attack that McFadden should have finished, but O'Neill would be most unlucky not to have finished that to the net. And what a game that would have set up them for us. Not, not to say that it's not a bad game up to now. And away comes Daniel Goulding. Eight watch. Down first, Kieran Sheehan. Good from here. It's very good. It's his third point of the match, all from play, off the boot of Kieran Sheehan. Well, there's no doubt about it. He's one of those lessers on fire today. If you can get the ball in the scoring area, while she, interestingly enough, provided the assistance that time, but Sheehan's left foot is lethal if he gets the opportunity. Parker making a change. Dennis O'Sullivan is coming on from Ballinascarty in West Cork. And the player that's going off is Alan O'Connor. So Cork, despite the pre-match predictions that they were going to have a very strong midfield, certainly Donegal have produced the goods. They have brought their A-game, Rory Kavanagh and Neil Gallagher. And Cork finding it difficult to win clean possession. Throw ball. Yes, it's interesting, Dennis O'Sullivan coming in, a different type of player altogether than Alan O'Connor, who has had a disappointing outing. But Dennis O'Sullivan, you can expect to do a lot more running at the Donegal defence. He's a much more mobile type of player. Graham Canty fouled. Paddy Kelly. One man up, it's done Colm O'Neill. Neil McGee trying to go down on the ball, but there was a touch by Colm O'Neill, and it is a free for Donegal. Yeah, just let's see this again. Ball is broken out that time. A cute tangle of legs, it must be said. Nobody actually touched the ball yet on the ground. There was a touch. There was a there slight was a touch slight by touch. Colin Yeah, slight one. So the referee is correct. Kieran Sheehan intercepts. Flicks the ball forward for Daniel Goulding. Has to win it. He does. Ahead of Neil McGee. Back first, Paul Kerrigan. Under severe pressure. Still it's alive. Paul Durkin comes off his goal line and then chases after him. The goalkeeper who normally plays outfield for his club, four masters in Donegal Town, lays it off and Donegal counter attack. This is Paddy McGrath, the right corner back, has to try and cut inside, head down. Is he charging? Yes, he is. Three for Cork. Yeah, no support that time at all for Paddy McGrath. Good defending by Cork. I think a combination of O'Connor and uh, Nolo Leary, and a correct decision by the referee. 